Um, uh, it's now my job to introduce Barry Sampson, who I have known for about 12 minutes, um, <laughs> and, and, and whose phone I have already stolen. Um, which, which was quite some going. Um, Barry is a, is, a consult, is, a, is a learning technology consultant, um, but spent a long time at B&Q, and I'm sure he will draw on that in his piece. And over to you, Barry. You forgot to mention the most important thing, which is I'm far too young to have achieved the Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> Thanks, Barry. Right. <laughs> right. Now, I've got 10 minutes to speak, but this will probably take about three minutes, because I have a five-month-old daughter that sleeps about three hours a night and I've drunk about four gallons of coffee today, so this might be fairly quick. Now, the first thing I want to do is just remind ourselves that we are talking about learning management, and learning management is not learning management systems. The whole process of managing learning is a lot bigger than the LMS. LMS is potentially a part of the process of learning management, but if we just think about it in those really narrow terms, we're very tempted to make that next leap, which is thinking that actually management isn't even management, management is tracking. And it's all those bad things that Charles has already talked about in terms of the assumption that if we track things and we do tests and we have scores, that learning is taking place when we know that isn't happening. So it is a bit of a, it's a wider subject than LMS. This debate is, has got to be bigger than just about LMS. I would also argue that whilst I believe there is a very strong case for managing learning. Management of learning shouldn't be the default position. Now, my um, good friend and colleague at um, Onlinement, Clive Shepherd, published a book last year in which he talked about shifting the mindset from that assumption that when there needs to be a training, a learning intervention, we would almost, almost automatically, certainly two or three years ago, think about a workshop. And then we have to make an argument for doing anything different. And he said, actually, no, we should think about online should be the first option. And if you want to do anything different to online, you should have to make a really solid, well-argued case for why you do anything different. And similarly, your first choice should be to do things asynchronously and then make a really robust argument for why something should be done synchronously because it's all about saving time and saving money. And that's not to say that things always should be online and asynchronous, but you should have a really solid case for doing otherwise. And I would say the same thing about management. Anytime you get involved in any kind of learning or training intervention, your assumption should be there is no reason to manage this. That's not always going to be the case. There will be really solid, robust reasons for managing learning. But you need to make those arguments, whether that's to someone else or whether that's to yourself not just assume that it needs to be managed because we're delivering it to people. And I'll try and make some of those arguments. I'm going to try and make three arguments why learning should be managed some of the time. The first one is that some of it is just too damned important not to manage. And some of that might be compliance training. The things that Charles already mentioned about keeping the CEO out of court. That's a perfectly legitimate reason to manage learning, and actually to manage learning at the extreme in terms of tracking things and being able to report on things and say that we have carried out due diligence, we have carried out certain activities that mitigate risk in the organisation. Perfectly valid reason for managing things. Sometimes it can be slightly more obscure in terms of making the link between the importance of the learning and the activity itself. I've been working with an organisation recently, a charity, with thousands of vehicles around the world and they train people on tire maintenance and tire maintenance is an incredibly important activity because people die in that organization every year through poor vehicle maintenance that's too important to leave to chance now that's not to say that this is about delivering content to an LMS we're not talking about someone out in the wilds of Africa or um, you know, out in an earthquake zone somewhere, sitting down in front of the LMS doing a piece of e-learning about something. This is all about on-the-job and practical and real training, but you can't just hope that the person that's going to show them how to do this knows what to do. It's too important to leave to chance. It needs to be managed. It needs to be structured. The same is true of a lot of management learning. If you look at the results of attrition rates in management. You know, I come from a retail background where attrition rates in management recruitment are appalling. It's 40 to 50% of managers don't make the first six months in the business. And if you ask them why, by far the most common reason is 
I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what was expected of me. They need a very clear path in terms of what they do. They need someone to manage what they're going to do. They need someone to structure what they're going to do. Again, that doesn't mean everything has to be in a learning management system. It has to be tracked. It has to be scored. But we can't assume that they can find out what they need to know themselves. We need to help them. We need to structure things. And that's because every day is somebody's first day. Whether that's someone's first day in the organisation, whether it's their first day in a new role, or whether it's their first time doing something, there's always something new going on. And for those of us that are experienced in doing these things, if we've been in an organisation a long time, if we've been even in a certain kind of role for a long time, we know how to find things, we know where to find things, we know who to ask about things. But it's easy to forget about the novice who hasn't got the context in which to find information, in which to process information. We need to help them. Again, we need to structure things, we need to organise things. We need to manage things, but again, this isn't about LMS. This could very well be managed by colleagues. This could be a wiki in which workplace colleagues provide and share information. It's still a form of learning management. It's still structured. It's still not leaving things to chance. It's also about the business of learning. Now, I spent years in various different organisations, in various different roles as an L&D manager, or training manager, in organisations where I was responsible for face-to-face -face training, in organisations where I was um, responsible for e-learning and technology. And I've probably spent 75% of my time managing things and 25% of my time, if I was lucky, training people. And actually, that's right. That's just the same as if I was the property manager or the transport manager or the marketing manager. My job was to manage things. My job was to manage a group of people, to manage resources, to manage a budget. And just like every other department, in order to do that, I need to have the best information. I need to have the best data. I need to be able to organize things. I need to know now why I want to spend X amount of pounds in 12 months' time. And I can't do that if everything is left to chance. Some of this needs to be managed, needs to be organized, so that I can justify things, so that I can make sure that those people that need the learning, that need training materials, that need support at the right time, get that. I'm going to bring up the T word as well, because say, 10 years ago, I was a training manager. And at some point, my department became a learning and development department, and I became a learning and development manager. And I came in the next week, and I did the same thing I was doing the week before. And I think most of the people working in the industry are still doing the same thing that they were doing before a lot of the time. Things have moved on hugely in 10 years, in terms of the way we do things, in terms of the, the tools and technologies available to us. But at the heart of it, a lot of what we do is about training. It's not about learning. And Charles is absolutely right. I agree completely. You cannot manage learning. Only a learner can manage learning. But you can manage training. And I think that if we look back at what uh, Charles said in, in terms of those results, those expectations, that the business is not disappointed in L&D functions because you fail to manage learning. They are disappointed because we are failing to deliver results. And a lot of that is because we are failing to manage training. That's it. Thank you very much.